I'm Madeline Faber, Managing Editor of High Ground News, and I'm here with Paul Young, who's the Director of the City of Memphis Department of Housing and Community Development, which is over some large projects in Memphis, like the redeve redevelopment of the Pinch District and the redevelopment of Foot Homes, an area that our on-the-ground team is focusing on as part of an embedded reporting engagement. Um, so, Paul. Yeah. Uh, HCD has obviously been around for a long time and has right. done a lot of these public housing redevelopments, but right. Foot Homes is unique for a few ways. Could yeah, you yeah. talk some more about that? Foot Homes is unique in that it is the last traditional public housing development, meaning that uh, all of the traditional style developments that uh, have existed in the city of Memphis over the last 60 to 70 years uh, have all been redeveloped with the exception of this last mm -hmm. one. And the style of redevelopment for those other, other units was mixed income developments, which means that you have some public housing residents, you have uh, some that are what they call tax credit uh, eligible residents, which means they make up to 80% of the okay. area median income. And what's and the you, point of that, that housing mix? So the point of mixed income is that you want to expand opportunities for the residents that live there. And that uh, also means that, you know, the style that we have uh, done public housing over the last 60 years has been that we essentially have large volumes of people uh, that have limited means, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people living in poverty. Um, and so it limits their uh, opportunities to connect uh, with different people. Um, and it also has resulted in... Uh, and not enough progress for the residents that have been there, meaning that um, there's this vicious cycle of poverty. And so you have generation after generation uh, that have uh, lived in these developments, and we as government haven't done a good enough job trying to connect mm -hmm. them to opportunities. And so with the new style of development, uh, by creating an economic mix, uh, you inherently give people uh, more opportunities to interact with those who may come from different backgrounds, um, so that's one opportunity. And then the other thing that we do with this development is there's a, a whole team of people that are charged with um, ensuring that the residents that moved from these developments have other opportunities, meaning that they're working with them on uh, whether they need educational opportunities, job skills training, uh, all of those daycare, mm -hmm. all of the things that they need to be successful in life. We have a team of okay. caseworkers that are working with all of those families. And so all of that is happening uh, with the families that have been relocated from foot homes over the last six months. And so we're getting ready to start demolition uh, actually at the end of this month. So we okay. had our uh, groundbreaking ceremony at the end of May. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing all of the pre-demolition work, taking out the thermostats and all the other components that uh, need to come out of the buildings. And so uh, the Housing Authority, which is a partner agency of Housing and Community Development, is leading that work in conjunction with Bay and Salazar. So MHA, the Housing Authority, mm -hmm. is over sort of the physical property redevelopment. Right. And HCD has an expanded role than it has in previous redevelopments right. in building up the neighborhood. Right, and, right. Uh, talk to me some more about what that entails. So we've, we've kind of, we have three sections of this project. There's the people side, um, and that part that I mentioned where, they were talk where I talked about working with the families and caseworkers, that's being led by the Women's Foundation and a group called Urban Strategies Memphis Hope. Um, the housing side is being led by the Memphis Housing Authority. Salazar, they're making sure that the units that are built mm -hmm. on the site are quality and look good. Um, and housing and community development in partnership with Community Capital, uh, which is a minority development firm here, uh, we are charged with the neighborhood side of this development. And so our responsibility is to ensure that not only are we building uh, nice, attractive units on the site, but we're also redeveloping the neighborhood around it. And so there's a couple of assets that we've committed to doing. One uh, is a grocery store. That's one of the more talked about much assets, much needed. Um, and so we are uh, in the exploration phases mm -hmm. for that, uh, trying to see... Uh, if we can find an operator that are located in that area, and if so, where are the development opportunities yeah. for that? Uh, we are charged with delivering on an early childhood center, and our goal is to deliver a high-quality early childhood center. Um, and so that means that uh, we want a center where the residents and the families that live in the immediate vicinity mm -hmm. uh, will uh, be able to send their kids there, but we also want it to be uh, strong enough such that families that 
or people that work in the medical district uh, and beyond also want to bring their kids there. So we want it to be somewhat of a destination. And so we're going to be working with a lot of different stakeholders to try to make sure that we are uh, going to deliver that. And we are also working with Shelby County Schools on that, and they have committed to do two classrooms there. Okay. Um, in addition to that, we have a home repair program. There's not a lot of uh, single-family homes in that area, but there are some. Mm-hmm. And we want to make sure that the residents that live there are able to take advantage of that. Uh, we have a small business loan program uh, that will be operational to support existing and future businesses in the area. Um, and then we have some placemaking work, which is all, which would essentially be uh, blight remediation, uh, public art, okay. things of that nature. And so, you know, we're really excited about what opportunities are to come in South yeah. City. And I know it's been a while. It took a while to get uh, the residents relocated. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mentioned that this is the last traditional public housing development. But what that means is that, you know, as residents move from Claiborne Homes or Dixie Homes or Lamar Terrace or... Right. Uh, or uh, Lauderdale Ports, uh, in many instances, those families moved to other public housing developments. And so given that Foothold was the last one, uh, the residents that weren't uh, able or didn't want to mm-hmm. find uh, housing outside of public housing ended up living in Foot Homes. And so uh, it was a little bit more challenging identifying spaces for all of those families to move. We've now done that. And so we're ready to hit the ground running. Sure. Um, in the next month, so you'll see a lot. And when you talk about, um, you know, Lamar Terrace, Dixie mm-hmm. Homes, the previous redevelopments that people might be more familiar with, they don't have this component, right? The early childhood center, right. the grocery store, this is something new for the right. choice right. neighborhoods. Right, so so those previous developments were done with a program called Hope 6, mm-hmm. which was primarily focused on the units on site, um, and we did a great job delivering those units. What the uh, folks at HUD found after years of operating that program is that while we've been able to do a great job redeveloping units on sites across the country, not just Memphis, uh, what they found is that they could have a more dramatic impact if during the phase of the grant Mm -hmm. they found opportunities to impact the neighborhood with other assets. And so they wanted to make sure that that was baked into the project because the, the, the line of thinking is that if we redevelop the housing, then everything else will come around it. Right. But it doesn't and, always happen that then, way. And it probably will happen over mm-hmm. time, but the question is, how long do you wait? Yeah. Um, you know, you have to have some developments that take place in order to really kick the private sector into uh-huh. gear. And then uh, the, the thinking is that by delivering these assets, we can really um, invigorate the, the private sector to really begin acting in the community around it as well. And one of those existing assets is Claiborne Temple, yeah. right? Very historic, important to the civil rights movement yeah. in Memphis. That's kind of been given a new lease on life right. with some new property owners and new uses. Yeah. And I know y'all are interested in land kind of surrounding Claiborne Temple right. and seeing how you can sort of use it as a gateway to right. improve the greater South City neighborhood. Yeah, Claiborne Temple, we're really excited about the work that they've been doing and Uh, All of the activities that have taken Mm -hmm. place in the building over the last year have been really exciting. Uh, We want to ensure that uh, that development is successful. We want to ensure that Foot Homes is successful. Uh, We've had conversations about, uh, not just a conversation, we're going to uh, develop I Am A Man Plaza, Mm -hmm. uh, which will be just south of Claiborne Temple. Um, And so as we look at the area around it, we want to look at are there other opportunities for uh, some of the assets that I talked about uh, to potentially be in some of those um, locations, which are now, uh, for the most part, vacant and abandoned. Mm-hmm. So, yes, that's a, that is definitely an opportunity that we are currently exploring. So, HCD is looking to purchase land around Claiborne Temple? Ideally, um, it would be a purchase, but we haven't landed on sure. uh, whether it would happen yeah. or not, uh, but we are certainly having conversations about and what are some of the uses that you'd like to see in the neighborhood for potential um, commercial residential spaces? We would like to see more um, um, nonprofit space, uh, things that contribute to a, a mm-hmm. holistic community. Um, obviously, I talked about a grocery store, maybe some neighborhood level businesses, okay. whether it's uh, retail or other services. Um, but we haven't gotten far enough along to do any type of. Mm-hmm. Of land use planning around what would happen, 
Uh, right now, we're just talking about where can some of these big assets that we've talked about, like the grocery store at Harold Chavez Center, take place. We did have a, we, we have worked with the Shelby County Schools to acquire options on two large properties, uh, two vacant, they're actually three vacant schools. And those are Vance Middle. Vance Middle, MLK Transitional School, as well as Georgia Elementary. Mm -hmm. And so all three of those schools are vacant in there right in our project area. We've acquired options from the schools uh, for those uh, buildings that would be uh, uh, Georgia Elementary and MLK. Um, we have not decided what will go with those, sure. but we do think that uh, Georgia Elementary would be a great opportunity for an early childhood center. Uh, we talked to some other nonprofits that might be interested in locating uh, in that facility. And so, you know, we're just exploring all of the options mm -hmm. right now. Um, I think over the next uh, six to seven months, we're going to really start honing in on what our development nineteen or so. Okay. And Foot Homes is important because you're, you know, semi-new in this role. Yeah. Yeah, and it's one yeah. of the biggest projects Memphis has ever seen. It's backed by a $30 million federal grant. Right. Over two hundred million entirely, but you also have a personal connection with it, right? Yeah, personal connection. My um, my grandmother was one of the first residents of wow. Foot Homes. My dad grew up thirty million dollars and city dollars that's in this project. We have $30 million from the federal government. We have um, about $219 million total in the project. Wow. Um, and that's uh, when you include uh, some of the uh, loans and tax credit equity mm -hmm. that will also be involved in the structure for the deal. So there's a lot on the line for the city and we want to make sure we get this thing right. Cool. So, but it's not all big projects that you deal with. You also deal with small kind of neighborhood residential based projects. Right, and, and that's one, been one of the things I've said since I've been in this role over the past year and a half is that I would love for the work that we do at the neighborhood level to be mm -hmm. on par uh, with the work that we do at you know that larger scale. Um, so we have implemented a number of programs. We've operated a down payment assistance program for years. Uh, and what we did over the past year is we have expanded that program uh, where we are not just using federal dollars. And when we use federal dollars, there's a restriction that comes along with it that uh, says that we must uh, cater to low to moderate income families. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what that does is it puts a cap on who we can provide that funding to uh, for down payment assistance. And so it caps at roughly 80% of the area of median income, which for a family of four is around $45,000. So what we did was we developed a new program where we can go up to 200% of the area of median income, which for a family of four, that's about $120,000. And that opens the program up to more people. Opens it up to more people, but we didn't just say we want you to move anywhere in the city of Memphis. We said we want you to move to our focus areas, the areas where we uh, would like to see growth, mm -hmm. uh, where we'd like to see more demand. Um, and so we identified zip codes and target areas where um, the uh, sales were, the home sales for each year were lower than the average for the city. Uh, but they're still very strong areas. We have areas like Whitehaven, um, Hickory Hill, Raleigh, Frazier, Binghampton, South Memphis, North Memphis, Uptown, uh, Glenview, Orangevale. Um, there's probably one or two that I'm forgetting. Sure. Um, but um, there are 14 uh, different geographies. And so large swath of the city where you can receive up to $10,000 uh, if you decide That's to purchase a home. So if you're in the market for a home. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and check out that program. We actually started the program in August and we ran out of funds by um, the end of January. Um, and you've increased the funds for the second round? So for the second round, uh, we are going to be, we had um, 500000 last year. Mm -hmm. um, so for this fiscal year, starting July 1st, uh, we will have 700000 okay. available uh, in down payment assistance. And so. Uh, that is a tremendous asset, and I think it's going to help uh, 
be an incentive for people that are deciding if they want to buy a home uh, in another county, sure. or another uh, community, we want this $10,000 to be an incentive for you uh, to locate in our neighborhoods, our great, strong neighborhoods for our, for our city, because we know we have to grow our population, we have to grow our density. Um, all of those things help us uh, provide better services uh, in the long run. So, Absolutely. And um, another one of those programs uh, is related to people experiencing homelessness in Memphis specifically. <clears throat> right, right, right. So we actually have a number of programs related to homelessness. We support countless agencies. Uh, well, well, you can't count them. <laughs> it's not countless. <laughs> but uh, a number of agencies uh, throughout the city that, that, that act in this space. But we have a new initiative that we have uh, uh, just recently taken on where our nonprofit housing department led a program called Neighborhood Stabilization a few years ago, where we acquired about 100 properties uh, that were lost due to foreclosure. Okay. And so we sold the bulk of those properties, but we had 26 remaining. And uh, our great team was trying to think of uh, innovative ways to uh, put those remaining 26 houses uh, to use. And so we worked with our partners at uh, CAP, uh, which stepped up to the plate and they are going to seek out homeless families mm -hmm. uh, to place um, residents, pl place families in those 26 homes. And so we transferred those properties to them and we're working with them now to get those properties um, redeveloped and uh, in a nice state. Um, we're also working with the housing authority uh, that's going to work with the, the families. And uh, we think it's going to be an exciting program. And, really a way for us to continue having an impact on our neighborhoods. And when will that um, go live? So um, right now we're already working on the redevelopment. Um, I think there are there's one or two of them that are getting ready to come online in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and so over the next six months, they will, we will have you know, units come online sure. uh, periodically. So um, if someone wants the information, they can definitely contact our team here at the Housing and Community Development, 576-7300, um, and talk with someone from our nonprofit housing department. Okay. And last question, I got to ask, because the pinch is another one of your big projects. Yeah, pinch When is, is the pyramid getting a pedestrian bridge? The, so if I was to put a date on it, I would say by the end of next summer, uh, or I think fall 2018 is probably mm -hmm. a safer uh, statement, but we are right now underway with the design process, uh, a lot of back and forth and email communication and work that's happening with the engineers and designers uh, to come up with something that's going to be um, something that this city can be proud of, uh, to go along with the tremendous investment that we've made in uh, Bass Pro Shops and uh, all the activity there. We want to make sure that that asset is very well connected to the fabric mm -hmm. of the city. Uh, you probably have seen that we are also doing work with the convention center. Uh, the convention center is going through, uh, will be going through renovation over the next two years. Um, and as we renovate that building and ideally generate more people, there's going to be more people that want to go into the pyramid, that want to uh, go in the pinch and, and, and enjoy some of our assets. And we want to make sure that it's all connected. And so uh, by the end of, uh, the fall, by the fall of next year, uh, that bridge should be in place. Our, our goal great. is to get started on it by the end of the year. Awesome. Well, is there anything else we should keep an eye on? No, nah, well, there's a lot of stuff happening, but <laughs> we're just going to keep working, and our goal is to make the city better. Um, and so anything we can do on the development front, we're part of a lot of conversations. Obviously, our means are limited, uh, but we do everything we can to try to stretch a dollar and leverage those dollars into more investment in our neighborhoods. Great. Well, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you.